core of energy and matter all the way through how our genetics have an impact on us through how our identity is being has been developed how the ego takes that identity and turns it into an experience because thought has to become reality mind has to become matter and i of identity has to become am mm -hmm. so the ego okay. is the bridge that helps you do that it's it's your actually your your biggest ally in helping you do that every day positive or negative and then the next Welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast, where we bring to you the most successful, happy, fulfilled gentlemen from around the world who have been able to conquer themselves, their life, their marriage, and their businesses. You will be learning from four-dimensional gentlemen who have cracked the code to the science of having it all. The question is, how can married entrepreneurs with kids become gentlemen, achieve true freedom, and build a successful, happy, and fulfilled life, marriage, and business. This show will give you the answer for that. My name is Alex Ramirez, and I'm your host, and you're welcome to the Gentleman Success, Happiness, Fulfillment Talk podcast. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to another episode of the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast. And um, today I have an incredible guest, which I'm oddly excited to talk to, learn from, and get to connect with. But before I introduce him to you, though, I just want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been leaving comments, reviews, likes on all the major podcasting platforms, Apple, Google, and Spotify. And to those who have been watching on YouTube as well, thank you very much. And I want to ask you for a favor today. I want to ask you that if you get something out of this interview, some type of value, uh, some type of information that changes your mind, that changes you, a skill, uh, or the inspiration to go out and take action and make some progress towards your goals, I want to ask you to please share this interview with one friend. Since this is how we grow, this is how we're able to share our message and motivate, inspire, and bless others out there to change their lives and uh, find their purpose, grow, and contribute to the world. And today, I have Howard Falco. Was that the, was the last name right, man? Falco? You got it. Yeah. I'm Falco. Mexican, so Falco. No, it's okay. all good. Uh, Howard Falco, and he's an author, spiritual teacher, and mental strength and peak performance coach to professionals and, co and college athletes. Uh, Howard teaches one how to harness the power of the mind for full creative potential. And his books, I am, I am the power, uh, no, I am the power of discovering who you really are and time in a bottle, mastering the experience of life. Those are his two books. Uh, he's author of those books, spiritual teacher, mental strength and peak performance coach to professionals, uh, athletes. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited about all of those topics, man. Thank you very much for being here and making some time and you are welcome, Howard. Thank you very much. So I'm, I'm honored to be on. I'm, uh, I'm excited to share with you. So it's great what you're doing here. Thanks, man. The first thing that I do with my guest, uh, Howard, is I tell them to walk us through their entrepreneurial journey in 75 seconds or less. 75 seconds. Wow. You're going to challenge me on this one. All right. Uh, I'm going to go quick. Very curious as a child, wanted to know the big questions, existential questions to life. What are we doing here? Who are we? Why are we here? Followed a, a, a journey thought would make me happy. We went to college, got a degree, got married, got, uh, got the career I wanted, and I wasn't happy. And the question still begged at me. I kept asking. And eventually one day, life cracked open the door and busted it down and gave me an insight on the origin of life, how it works with each one of us and how we can thrive. Decided to leave my career as in the financial business and write, write about this. And so that's what I've been doing for the last 20 years is writing, teaching, and speaking about the power of the mind and how it has an impact on what we create in our lives. And then it led to working with athletes at the highest level um, and individuals going through anything. So that's that's been my 75-second journey. I hope that was 75 seconds, maybe a little less. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. I love it. So, um, so like the, the first half of my podcast was interviewing like modern gentlemen, right? And I guess it was based a little bit on, on, on my ego and like to prove myself, to prove my, to myself that I could speak to these people, but I got a lot of seven, eight and nine figure entrepreneurs. So like the, 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 the first half of my podcast was um, getting very successful people, right? Getting myself, uh, uh, you know, like very, very successful people. And, and, uh, and then now this, this, this next part is getting people who not only are, you know, the definition of modern gentlemen, but, who do what they do because of purpose. Yeah. Right. Because that's what I'm doing. Right. And I'm very driven by it. Like oddly driven. Yeah. I don't know how to explain. It. I don't know how to put it in words. I no, I, I like, understand it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 
so I, I sometimes feel like I'm missing out, you know, because you hear those people, all those people who are like driven and motivated by, by something, like something is pulling them, right? Or they're like, they're being pushed by the opposite, like by fear, right? And I don't have any of, the, of those two. I'm just like driven from within. Well, you're being right? pushed by your soul, by passion and what fulfills you, what makes you feel fulfilled and happy. So and that's the same thing I'm doing um, is since this insight, I felt very blessed, very graced. And I felt like kind of a letter carrier that, that you know, had something magnificent to deliver. And my job is just to make sure it stays in the public discourse. So people who are looking for this insight on self-awareness and self-understanding and how to empower their minds know that it's here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm very excited to talk about that. But before I ask you about that, man, um, so you were like inquisitive, right? Curious as a child. Uh, and I, I, I very resonate, I resonate a lot with that because that's how my brother is. I have a little brother and we are like 10 years apart. So we never really had a relationship, but I watched him grow. And when he was little, he would ask for a telescope because for some reason he was curious about like, holy shit, like, holy cow, like, look at everything that is in the sky. Like, what is it? Like, how does it work? Right. He would ask all of those questions and he asked my mom for a telescope and guess what my mom said, no, you're crazy. Stop. Just go to, I don't know, go to school, whatever. Right. But like that curiosity, that inquisitiveness was killed. And then later, you know, he would look at the ground and he wanted to like, he collected rocks and he wanted to look at the, at the, at the insects, insects, uh, uh, ants. Right. And he asked for like a little, you know, like magnifying, magnifying. thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, right. His curiosity, his, that, that, that inquisitiveness was killed. He was like, no, go and do your homework or go and clean or whatever. Right. Whatever was important for my mom at that moment. Um, but, and then I, and, and I saw this happening time and time again. Right. And you mentioned right now how you've always been inquisitive, right? Like this, you, you always had this curiosity. So I want to know about that. And I want to know how, like, are you, you have children, right? Yeah. Two. How are you like making sure to not, not only not kill this inquisitiveness and curiosity on your child, children, but how are you, how are you like helping them embrace it? So um, to your first question, the curiosity was always natural to me. I was the kid in class that was always raising my hand and challenging what I was being taught and told if I felt that I had a different view on things. Um, I think it came a lot from my dad who um, was naturally curious and able to learn on his own how to take a car motor down to its last bolt and put it back together, how to build construction, how to do anything. He cool. learned it all himself before Google. So this mm. was when he had to actually get manuals and textbooks and learn how to do it. So I had that natural curiosity. And then one night um, on, a, on a camping trip, first time away from the Chicago city lights, I experienced the sky in its full, unbelievable, magnificent, speechless splendor. And I was like, that's above our head every night. Okay. I, I've got a few questions. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. there was a lot of questions that were built on that night. It was a pretty profound experience. And that, that led me on my journey that was constantly looking for insight and understanding on the origins to life. As far as how I, or how we, I should say, me and my wife um, parent with our kids, when it comes to this is we, we come from a place where, where we want to support whatever their soul is looking to experience. So anything they want to do, that is within the goodness, you know, which it's always been, then we're willing to support and not squash. We're always open to whatever it is they want to do and what they want to learn. And how we've passed this along is not from me preaching or proselytizing or giving them my books to read, but simply how, the, how we live our lives, the, mm -hmm. the okay. personality, the way that we interact with each other, with people. Um, we've done it by example. Okay. And so what do you think about school? Because personally, I mean, I, I like school. I went to college. I got a full ride scholarship uh, for some reason, I, even though I did like high school high. Um, and I got a full, full, full ride scholarship that gave me like a, like a year and a half of time to not have to worry about money because they would literally pay for my meals and everything and even gas and clothes. So, I mean, I, I, and I was really, you know, I was like, I was, I was like, good. I, not even trying. I was good at school. But right now, right, that I've been able to raise my level of awareness, I don't think, I mean, I don't think it's the answer, right? Like, I don't think school is the answer. What I would rather do with my daughter is like send her to, I don't know, like a superhero special school in which they would find their, who she is, right? Their unique strengths, their unique talent, her unique talents, 
and then embrace that and then just exploit those talents. And by the time she's 12, 15 years of age, she's like, you know, world-class at something. Yeah. That's so that's one. Do. Yeah. That, that's, and obviously that's a personal choice and that's one way to look at it. I guess the way that I look at uh, the school system is that there are certain uh, things that just some, some structural things that need to be learned, reading, writing, math, history, you need to understand some basic things about the nature of life itself. And then as they develop and grow, as long as in the, in the home, you're fostering that them to be truly who they are without any um, sort of restraint on that, then that's the whole point. I guess, you know, when you go to college, they make you take elective courses uh, along with some mandatory courses, because you never know what's going to pique your interest. You never know, you know, you could shut something off in your mind, but you have to take the course. And all of a sudden I didn't know I liked to paint, but I'm glad they made me take this as one of my electives or, or one of my uh, core courses that I have to take. So it could spark that and it, and it could send them on a completely different path. So th there's two different ways to look at it. I think if there's a really good sense of self that's fostered in the home, then they can get their core education and still go on and thrive at whatever it is they truly want to do. Um, but it depends, depends. Everybody's different on that. Yeah. Fostering a good sense of self. Awesome. Do you have any insights on how to do that with kids? Well, it, with, with kids, it's you're constantly directing them when you're parenting, not by look what, you know, you're a bad person. You did this wrong. Look what you did. But, that's not who you are. How can you shift that to be more of the version of really who you are, which is this way, which is being nicer, which is saying things with, with, with manners and with grace, that's who you are. So you're constantly nudging them towards that with a sense of that's who they are rather than, you know, you're a bad person or, or manipulating them with a lot of the old school ways, which was guilt, shame, and regret. That, that yeah. really is what poisons the mind. So you foster a sense of self by imbuing in them, a greater sense of self than they maybe can see it in themselves at times. If they like have those that. moments. Yeah. If they have those moments, some, some so kids instead, just are genuinely fine. So let's say that they did something stupid instead of telling them you are stupid. Right. Just point it out to them and be like, like not you're not you stupid. Are. Right. That's not who you yeah. are. Right. But you there did you this. Go. You're not no, like, you don't normally do it. Do, do this. Like what happened? Right. Because like, that's not the way that you normally do things. The, normally, right. the, the way you normally do things is this way. Yeah, because this is going to make it harder on you. If you do this, this is what happens. So we need to find the real you. The real you is someone who's going to do things nicely. Now you do it this way. Look at the different response. Look at the different reaction. Look at what happens for you. Um, so you're just constantly fostering them a greater sense of self-respect and love. Obviously, nurturing is huge. They need to know that they're loved and supported um, so that they can allow themselves to love themselves more. Um, yeah. And, and mm -hmm. everybody's got a different coded genetics that they get given right and those things have a big influence on us big influence whatever mix of genetics we get um so the genetics the nurturing and the personal experience are the three layers that end up becoming their ego and their identity that takes them on the journey of their life until they change it damn can you repeat those three sure the genetics you're given from your parents and their parents etc past generations everybody gets a different mix that has a predominant effect on their mindset not only their their skin color, eye color, hair color, et cetera. But the way they look at the world is shaped by those genetics. Um, the second thing is okay. nurturing by your primary caregivers, usually your parents. And then the, what happens is those get layered over in an experience at 11, 12, 13, 14. And it sets the ego with an identity. And then that identity then seeks its realization positively or negatively. Mm, that was, that was inf insightful. Cool. All right. So you mentioned love, man. This is something I want to, I want to talk about love. Right. And, uh, but, but like, keep me, keep me going with your story. So, um, you know, there were all of these questions that sparked, you know, from, from when you looked at the sky and you were like, like, this is here every night. Like, you, you know, there were a lot of questions that sparked from there on. So like, walk me through that journey. So the journey was looking up at that sky and seeing that magnificence above our heads how could you not see the profound nature of life itself and the perfection of it and the beauty of it when you see that sits there? So that led me to more of an inquiry of, okay, so why is there disparity in the world between those that suffer and those that don't? Why are there wars? Why is, um, you know, what is our purpose here? Why do, you know, why do some people have easier lives than others? Just some deeper questions on, on the nature of who am I and what am I doing here? And mm -hmm. that, 
I asked those questions for years. Now, while I was doing that, I, I graduated from, put myself through school and college, uh, graduated, got a degree in finance, got, got a job in the finance industry, fell in love, got married, had two kids, bought a home. All this stuff was going on, but in the background, these questions were just nagging at me. And I wasn't at this place of peace when I looked around at my life and I should have been, which made me really freaked out. And I thought, okay, it's got to be millions of dollars because that's the American dream. And what happened was one day I realized, man, I'm working with millionaires right now who are miserable. It's not the answer. And when that yeah. one was taken away, I was like, I'm out. Now I'm really scared. Now I'm staring into the abyss of, I don't know. But that was also the greatest thing that could have happened to me because it humbled me to the point where I just said, look, universe, life, God, whatever it is you aspire to spiritually, I, I'm ready to know. Show me. Cool. And mirac yeah. And that's when the miraculous started to happen about two weeks after that. Um, I was in a seminar and, and for the financial industry and some information was coming through about the psychological nature of trading the markets. And it hit me in a way and on a human level in the way that we're creating our lives. And it started me on this incredible journey of, of answers that culminated in a massive shift in consciousness that occurred in 2002 in December that changed my life. And, and that's the one that took me about a year to kind of get my arms around the magnitude of it and the grace of it. And I just decided to dedicate my life to it from that point forward. And that's where that book came from um, was, was that insight. I am. Okay. Before I ask you about what the insight is, I don't want to breeze, breeze over, you know, what you just, the story that you just told that you, you checked all the boxes, you went to college, got your degree, you know, started a, a good career, uh, started making money, got married, bought the house, right? So you checked all the boxes, you got everything that you thought you wanted, right? And then when you had everything that you thought you wanted, you were like, I'm not at peace. So like, what's going on? Correct. Right? And that's were, exactly how a lot of people find themselves, right? They, they find themselves chasing all of these things that they think they should have. And then when they get them, they, they're not happy. Right. And then, right. and then they, so think, they chase something else. <laughs> yeah. They get a million and they're like, all right, I'm not happy. It must be 10. Yeah, yeah. It must be two. It must be 10. They get to two yeah. and um, it, might, it must be 10. And they're, and they're just like continuously chasing the rabbit. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's a dog um, chasing the tail. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and so, so I, I didn't want to breeze over that because that's extremely important. And so you got everything that you thought you wanted. You were not, you know, like, I don't know, maybe you were not happy. You were not in peace. Um, so you realize that it's not like material things and, and, and achievements, no. and, right? No, So exactly. So what was it? What was the insight that you got? So first of all, I know plenty of people who have nothing that are richer than people with everything. Mm. So what it was, was what it came down to, what I was realized I was searching was a sense of inner contentment that opened the door to self-love and self-respect. And my whole life, I felt I wasn't good enough, that I needed to have this and have this and be this good. Yeah. And, you know, I constantly was looking for approval and acceptance. And one day I realized that I already was the perfection that I was searching for in each moment. Damn. In each and that's moment, for everyone. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. In each moment, I was doing the best that I could have for that moment. Now, that doesn't mean that next, tomorrow, the next day, I can't expand, evolve, change, learn, grow. That's what life is all about, right? That's what we're here to do. Um, but for every moment in the past that I thought I could have, would have, or should have done better, those are three lies. I did the best I could at that time based on the consciousness that I was in my total understanding. Um, and once I realized that, it alleviated me of the backpack that I was carrying a weight of regret and shame and guilt. It all just vanished. And that sent me into a blissful, very ethereal state of mind that hmm. caused a flood of self-love and self-appreciation. Sorry for the interruption. If you're an aspiring, established coach, course creator, author, and speaker, I want to extend an invitation to check out my free training on the podcast Cloak Track Framework by clicking on the link the description of this podcast on this training you're going to learn how combining podcasting with a rare concept that very few people know about called the club track can help you build a multi-million dollar network of successful people who can become your clients put you in front of hundreds of your ideal clients with your message coaching courses and books help you become a best-selling author get you book to speak on stages or even making an extra two hundred and thirty-seven thousand six hundred dollars in the next six months 
Click on the link of the description of this podcast to learn about the four simple steps to make this work. Step number one is alignment. Aligning who you're trying to be, what you're trying to do, your goals and purpose with building your podcast so that podcasting is a vehicle to help you achieve your goals. Step number two is leveraging the cloak track to find an unlimited supplier of your ideal podcast guest. Step number three is leveraging the cloak track to close an interview with anyone, no matter how rich, famous, or out of your league they may seem. And step number four is the content machine, which is the key to tapping into other people's audiences. These are the four steps to making the podcast cloak track framework work, and I'm not going to hold anything back on this training. So click on the link in the description of this podcast, go and check it out. And once you've done that, if you feel like this would help, we also have a complimentary free, absolutely free alignment call to get you started and show you exactly how to implement everything. Get access to the training right now. And I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Bye-bye. That caused me to block no information that would change my life because I I had that much love for who I wasn't blocking or protecting or um, um, I wasn't stopping the universe's unconditional love for me anymore. And therefore it showered me with this insight. And um, it's hard to speak of sometimes because it's very emotional, but I was very, I felt very blessed and honored and took a while to just put my arms around it and then decided to honor it for the rest of my life. But the whole key to it was realizing that I've been doing the best I can at each moment of my life. And I have, I have a line in the book that, I've, that I wrote twice in the book because I wanted people to really understand the significance of it. And the truth is for every human being, if you could have done better in any past moment, you would have. A hundred percent. Yeah. Man, I, I almost got this, like the urge to cry, not because of me, because like I've been, I've, you know, I've been uh, diving into, you know, personal development and the spiritual and the unseen and all of that. And I, I, I knew, you know, I, I've known for a couple of months now that I'm good enough. And I almost got this, like this warning of to cry because not for me, but I was like, ah, oh, I hope like people listening get it. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, exactly. It's for them, right? It's the beauty of the, you're feeling the ripple and you're hoping that ripple has impact, right? Yeah. Um, so let me tell you my, my experience with like having this breakthrough, man. Uh, so I have a calendar. It's called Big Ass Calendar. That's how it's called by Jesse Itzler. And I, I track my emotions. You know, like you, have you seen that little triangle that goes through like emotions and vibrate like frequencies and stuff? I've seen similar things too. I don't know if I've seen the exact thing you're looking at, but, but so, I understand how the, you know, the emotions work. And so it's color, right? Like it's like, it yeah. was like red, uh, purple, like black, red, purple, and then it starts getting better, green, blue. And, um, and I've been coloring my, coloring my emotions for, you know, some months now. And last year out of every month, out of every 31 days of the month, I would spend 28 days of those 31 days in purple or red, right? Which is doubt, frustration, fear, self-sabotage. That's how I would spend most of my months. 28 days out of every 31 days of the month, I would spend them in, well, bad, right? Like in a negative state of state of being. And, you know, I made that shift a couple of months ago by working with Peter Sage. I don't know if you know who he is. Uh, Peter Sage, he's in, like a spiritual, spiritual teacher as well, philosopher. And I've been working with him. And like this year in December, I met, I met him in, in December, right? And in January, out of those 31 days of the month, I had about 20 that were spent in either frustration, overwhelm, doubt, and fear, right? And then February, I had about 15 days of the month that were, that were spent in like frustration, doubt, and all of that negative. <clears throat> and then in, in uh, January, February, in March, I had like 10. And then in, in uh, April, I had like, 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 like three snippets of doubt here and there along my days. The red, so now my days are called are colored green and blue, right? Blue is on fire and blue is positive. And that's like the shift that I've been able, that I've been able to make by understanding and really internalizing and embracing that insight that you just talked about. It's beautiful. It's awesome. Perfect. You want to constantly try and raise your, your frequency through the way that you're processing how you look at yourself and how you look at the world, because that's the origin of those frequencies. That's the origin of what's going to turn into emotional energy or energy in motion. Um, emotion um, is basically how you process the way you look at yourself and the way you look at the world and how that coincides every minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that, so that then this is what you had that insight. You decided to dedicate your life to honor that. 
and right. that that is what i am the um how to harness the the no 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 the power of discovering who you really are that is, right. that's what the book is about it's a book on self-awareness and self-understanding from the very core of energy and matter all the way through how our genetics have an impact on us through how our identity is being has been developed how the ego takes that identity and turns it into an experience because thought has to become reality mind has to become matter and i of identity has to become am. Mm -hmm. So the ego okay. is the bridge that helps you do that. It's, it's your, actually your, your biggest ally in helping you do that every day, positive or negative. And then the next section of the book is, is basically about how you remove the limits, the lies, and any thought that doesn't serve you in what you're trying to become. And it shows you how those are lies and then how that produces fear, which is the biggest creator of time is fear or the feeling of time and how to overcome that. And then the last half of the book is the creative process. Once you, once you finally harness the truth of who you are, then the last half, the last quarter of the book is the creative process. Damn. I'm, I don't know, but that sounds life changing to me. And I actually ordered your books, both of them, but uh, mm. you know, they, they didn't come Amazon will, you know, it will, they will come tomorrow. So I was going to like, I was going to like to flash them to the audience, but, but I, I wasn't them. able to get them. <laughs> yeah. Flash them, man. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Um, so, so what, what are some of your insights can you give uh, based on what are some insights, maybe some mind shifts, maybe some, you know, yeah, that you can be, give based on your book? Sure. So you think well, our one, of the, one, of the, one of the first things that I, when I do a speeches or talks or retreats that I, that I tell people is the very first statement is for them to contemplate is if you knew how powerful you really are, you would never stop smiling. Mm -hmm. And that's just an invitation to what's really inside you. To what really can be opened up when you're ready for it. Um, but some of the life-changing insights that I can offer is that life and the quality of it, because it's really not quantity, it's the quality of moments, not the quantity, is all based on the way that you are perceiving life and perceiving who you are in relationship to life. And what's exciting to know about that is that means that the quality of your experience is always in your control. So once you have the quality understood through, your, through the way that you perceive and respond to the world, the next big understanding, and I'm giving you sort of some big answers to me to some math equations that it really helps for the wisdom to understand how the equation comes together. But, I'll, but nonetheless, I'll give these, um, is that once you realize how to, how that you are, the way you're perceiving and responding to life is determining the quality of your experience, you also start to see how the power of what you create is based on the quality of your mindset in every moment, on the quality of your energy, on the polarity of it. And so you are creating through the frequency you're beaming out like a radio tower, a certain signal. And it's either saying self-hatred, which is then collecting the environments in the, in the universe that give you the feeling of self-hatred, or it's saying fear. And then it's bringing back things from your world, meaning media, people, events that help you confirm that, or it's saying love and joy and happiness where miraculously those things start to come into your reality. And that's, I guess, what they call the law of attraction is really the vibratory pattern, you know, response to it. But what, what's really changed my life was the realization that life is always in a co-creation process with me. So I have to do my 50%. I have to be in the right state of mind, understanding. I have to constantly humble myself, receive better insight, more, more insight to help me stay grounded, focused, loving, non-judgmental then life seems to know what I think and what I'm looking to create because our intentions are seeds. Like nature has seeds for human beings, mm -hmm. the seeds of what we're going to grow into existence are our intentions. Life seems to know what my intentions are. Like it knows that the seed needs water and sunlight and soil. It knows what I require in order to help manifest my creative intent. And it starts to move those pieces into my world. So that's why there's no coincidences in life, right? This is a beautiful co-creation right now between me and you. Both of our intentions are being beautifully met right now. I can feel it. 
on my end, anyways, I can, I can speak for. So, mm-hmm. so that's another thing I learned about life, which made, which raised my faith and my love and my connection and my, you know, my trust in life dramatically, which then just fueled more of the grace. So it's like a snowball. Once it gets to the fulcrum point of the mountain rolling downhill, instead of having to push it uphill, you know? So anyway, those are just a few wisdom nuggets. <laughs> I love that. And, um, I love, so there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to talk about, right? <laughs> right. Here. But, but let, let, me, let me just go on to, you know, to a couple of things. So quantity versus quality. So quantity, first of all, like we weren't, we weren't born for a long, for a long time, right? Like we were not born for a long time. Like before us, there's a long time, right? And then we're going to die and we're going to be dead for a long time. So like <laughs> in reality, we're just a very small amount of time here on this earth. Right. So hundred percent. Right. I totally agree that it's not about quantity of life, but quality. So then you mentioned that you can control your quality, right? You like the, 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 the quality of your life is in 100% not control, not control okay. the quality, but you can create the quality. Got it. All right. And so, and how you, how, how do you do that? So you do that by questioning any moment that you have a disharmonious thought or feeling Uh questioning it in order to find where the root of the suffering is coming from. What belief do you have that is causing you to be in such a disharmonious state? Because I've learned something else about life. And that is that any thought that causes a sense of self limitation, fear, suffering, or discontent is stemming from a lie. Mm Mm-hmm. So if you can find the thought through self-awareness, self-reflection, you can find out what you've been thinking that has not been aligned with what the truth is of who you are. Let me give a simple example. Someone cuts you off on the highway. Now, obviously, when you're driving at a high rate of speed and you get jolted, you're going to have some fear energy immediately just because of the nature of life. And it's going to create some energy and Hopefully you just take a breath, move over, let them go by and you're fine. But if you get irate at them, what's happening is you have a belief about a judgment about them and about, about you not being safe on the road that want that where you want to tell them, you want to yell at them, you want to scream at them. And the truth is that when you drive on the freeway, it is possible you're going to encounter people who aren't paying attention. Things like that may happen. The less you let it affect you because you're prepared for anything can happen out there. You don't know if the, the woman's husband just died or she's going to see her child in the hospital and she's not paying. You don't have no idea what the story, not making it right. They you know, obviously come over into your lane. But the point is to take on that energy and to let it ruin the next 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes of your day is a waste if you're truly looking for peace. So the better approach is to say, well, that was close. Thankfully, I'm okay. I hope they're okay. And I'm just going to move over into the right lane here and just kind of chill for a minute and take a deep breath, gather myself and move on with my day. But you know what, universe, God, thank you for uh, making me pay a little more attention and, uh, and not get in an accident. I appreciate that. It's a completely different way of looking at it. Um, but the thoughts that sparked it, they shouldn't do that. I can't believe that jerk. They tried to kill me. Those are all coming from lies. None of that is true. Mm, yeah. None of it. Yeah. So <clears throat> there's a couple of things that, you know, this sparked. The first one was that life is 10% what happens to you and 90% what you make of it. Correct. Right. So like another example, you're going to work, right? You trip over your kid's bike and you get mad. You throw the bike, you yell at your kid. And now your wife gets mad at you. Now you're, you're, now you have a one hour discussion. Now you're work, you're late to work, you know, like going really fast. You almost have an accident. You get to work, uh, your, your boss, uh, you know, like yells at you for being late. You yell back because you have all of these emotions in you, you get fired, right? Just out of that 10% of what happened, get, you know, tripping, you know, in another story, you trip and you're like, you go to your kid and, and, and you know, you, you, you like come from a place of gratitude and love and you just tell him to 
that like the bike does not go there to put it in the right exactly. place the next time. Exactly. Right. Completely exactly. different. The completely different outcome. Now, yep. like your kid is not mad. Your kid is not sad. You're not late to work. Your wife is not mad at you. You're not getting fired. Yeah. So life, two different realities. Yeah. That's crazy, right? And yeah. it was just because like your intention, like your intention being aware. Um, that's a great example. Yeah. And that's what's in front of us at every moment. There is an infinite number of possibilities, but it all stems from who we define ourselves as. Who do we choose to be in this moment? That will determine which of those possibilities collapse into a reality. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. the exciting part is that we can keep opening these doors that lead to more success, more fulfillment, more joy. Now, we have to be careful of expectation and we have to keep staying humble so that we gain an awareness and understanding of what the process is based on what we're trying to create. Because there is a process. And I want to be really clear here on this. There are no shortcuts. Now, yes, there are, quote, hacks or shortcuts when it comes to understanding, gaining information, but no shortcuts in the sense where you can skip the awareness piece. And the best way that awareness comes in is through experience. Mm. Now, some people are a little faster on that learning curve than others, but everybody has to go through that process to gain the awareness that allows them to make the decisions, get in the right frequency of energy that produces things at a higher rate of speed. So you want to see why some people who are famous or have made a lot of money or entrepreneurs that seem to be on the fast track, they still have to go through the process of no shortcuts, but they're just able to learn and respond at a much higher rate of speed than somebody else. But the process is the same of no shortcuts. Does that make sense? I like that. And, um, you know, when I gave an insight that I, that I learned and I want to like, you know, see what your opinion is on this, um, you know, talking about speed. So, so, you know, people want something, you know, on their exterior world, but their exterior world, they say the direct reflection of their inner world, right? If we put it in another, in another context, their financial bank accounts is a direct reflection of their emotional bank account, right? But like what most people struggle with is that they attach their emotional bank account to their financial bank account. So if their financial bank account goes down emotionally, they go down as well, instead of, you know, feeling good enough and knowing that they're worthy of everything, no matter what happens here on the, on the financial bank account, no matter how much it fluctuates. And another thing that they, you know, that most people get wrong is that they don't realize that the financial bank account is a lagging indicator, right? Like, you're not going to get the money that feel good. You got to feel good and then get the money. Right. Right. And, you know, and, and like between this two, so you get your emotional bank account, cur- right. Right. You get on the, the right frequency, you get on the, the, the level of awareness that you have to get on in order for you to receive whatever it is that you want to receive on your financial bank account. And between your inner world and your outer world, there's a, you know, a, uh, how can I call this a time time frame that has mm-hmm. a process, right? There's no shortcuts, there's time. And, the speed and, and like the speed at which your, your outer world will reflect your inner world will determine on your alignment of your thinking and feeling sensor, right? The alignment of your thinking and feeling sensor and the consistency of the frequency that you broadcast. You mentioned a little bit about that right now. So what do you think about that? Well, that, I, I, that yeah, I think it's accurate. Sound? I think you have to be consistent in your intention, your actions, and your belief. And you have to be um, unguarded in your ability to humble yourself, admit when you took action that led you away from what you want, take in information that's going to help you make a new choice. Um, I think it was uh, Jonas Salk who had a great quote. Jonas Salk developed the vaccine for polio years ago. And he said that um, evolution or, or growth or solutions are are, are a process of awareness, response, and react, and and then a reaction with the new awareness so that you keep growing and learning how to put the conditions together. And ultimately you get to your result. So that's why like scientists, they get excited by a failure Mm -hmm. because it gave them information on what didn't work, which means they're closer to the formula that will work. I guess that's the essence of that quote. And so the idea is in life, when you're trying to create something, you're right. It's about consistency and belief 
and action and that frequency, but it's also about the humility to be able to look at what can I learn to be better. The great athletes in the world, the ones that I work with or ones you see on TV, they're, you know, like when Tom Brady w- was losing a game a couple of years ago, I remember watching, it was the end of the game they had lost. He, he couldn't save the game this time miraculously. And he was on the sidelines and he wasn't yelling at his players. He wasn't pouting. He wasn't, you know, he, he, he wasn't distracting himself. He was on his iPad looking at what he could learn from the last drive that they didn't succeed on to gain information that was going to help him in the next game. That's so he humility. was already way ahead. Yeah. That's humility. That's the ability. And that's what all great champion athletes have or entrepreneurs. They have the ability to humble themselves, to be able to learn what not, well, not until they get really successful, then they seem to lose that humility, but uh, some of them, but, but the point is that they, that what got them there was the humility to keep the curiosity mind open to absorb all the information that life has, because all the answers already exist in life to everything. Okay. They already are. The question is, are you opening to them and are you ready to receive them? Because they're going to change the way that you look at yourself. They're going to change the way you look at the world. Are you ready for that? That's the whole key to it. Are you ready and open to receive them? Yeah. So how do you get ready and open? Well, you have to love yourself at such a level that you fear no information or the way it's going to change you because you know that you will always be you. you. You don't ever lose yourself. You lose the way that you approach the world and the identity that you had, and you change it to a different identity, but you never lose who you are. And people are so protective over being wrong because the world has shamed them and guilted them. And so they don't want to experience any more shame or guilt. So they don't ever admit they're wrong. They don't ever look at themselves. And that just creates more ignorance and more ignorance creates more suffering. Hmm. And it came back to love. Well, yeah, the whole key is realizing that you are, I'm going to use this word and I don't mean it as like you said earlier, when you were telling me your story, it's not that you're better than anybody else. It's not that you're worse than anybody else, but you are perfect, right? Just as you are. Mm. And there is no place that you're supposed to be other than this moment, listening to these words. That's exactly where you're supposed to be right now. You're not behind You're not ahead. You're just exactly perfectly right where you're supposed to be on the journey. But that's exciting because if you keep opening to new insights, the universe will keep flooding you, you know, with, with, with information. It's just, some people like to drink from the fountain. You know, I'm more of a fire hose guy. It's like, give me everything. And I, you know, that's how I, that's what, that's why this happened to me because I was like ready for all of it. You know, I didn't just want a sip of wisdom. I wanted it all. And so, uh, but everybody's not like that. Everybody you know, and that's the beauty of free will too, is that you mm. get to do this at your pace. So, um, Howard, you know, I have five questions that I ask at the end of my interviews and I want to make sure to have time to ask them, but like humility, wisdom, love. So, um, I want to talk about a little bit about that, like very briefly. So my, my, my core values are humility, respect, humility, and wisdom, right? That's what I go by every single day. And then motivate, inspire, and bless. That's what I live for. And the way that you can motivate, because a lot of people are motivation, but they are, you know, for lack of better words, assholes, right? So like if they're rich, they're like, I'm rich, you're poor, I'm, I'm, I'm jacked and you're fat or whatever. And that doesn't inspire anyone. The way you inspire is by coming from a place of love, from respect and humility, right? So when you motivate and then you're an example, and then you do it from a place of love, respect and humility, you inspire and then you bless them and you change their lives. And that's, and, and so uh, respect, humility, wisdom. Um, motivate, inspire, bless, right? And you talk a lot about wisdom, humility, love. So I just, you know, selfishly, I just want to ask you to, uh, for some insights to, because wisdom and discernment and amplitude of heart, that's all I ask for, you know, to God or the universe, or that's not what I ask for. I ask for, I ask for wisdom. I ask for discernment. I ask for amplitude of heart and love. Um, And I want to get some insights from you as to how I can make sure to allow myself to get wisdom and and be humble and discernment. That's it. That's all I want. (laughs) So I'm going to answer this, but I'm going to preface the answer. I do not mean this simply because it's me. I'm just very fortunate to be the bridge right now. Okay. So I'm grateful to be that person at this very moment, but that'll change every single day. But my answer to you, Alex is that you're doing it right now. 
I'm a fire hose guy. That's why. <laughs> no, yeah. And I am but honored yeah, and blessed to be the person that is delivering for, on behalf of the universe. I am delivering in this moment. And I'm very blessed to do that right now. So, but to answer your question, you're already doing it. Like that's the beautiful part of this is that, I mean, it's so exciting. I've got goosebumps. Like it's, it's really cool. That's the three things you're asking for. And that happens to be the wheelhouse of my work. So, I, you know, I, hopefully I'm filling some of that, you know, that understanding, that discernment, that how you get to that. Um, I think, you know, again, we talk about love, we throw that word out so much, but it really comes down to being able to look at yourself and seeing the perfection that you are and, and, and removing any doubt or any thought, thought or any, any belief, anything that's deep rooted in the psyche, the self, the genetics that says anything less than that. And that's the journey that to me is that's the whole reason for that book or both my book. It's, it's the whole reason for all the work is to get you to that, to, if you want that truth, if you want that liberation that brings the highest level of wisdom, humility, and discernment, that is the path. Mm. Thanks. Thanks for the wisdom man, and, and everything and being here. So uh, the first Definitely. question is, I have, uh, you know, we have six, six minutes. We have five questions. I'm very excited. The first question is, uh, Howard, what advice would you give your 20-year-old self? I'm 21, so that's, you know, kind of for me. But what advice would you give your 20-year-old self if you could? Um, if I could, I would look back at my 20 year old self and I would, I would tell him, you're just fine. You're learning, you're growing, be kind to yourself, be patient, be more loving, take a deep breath, relax. It's all going to happen for you. If you stay grounded in trust and humility and who you are and this, and this beautiful, unbelievably divine universe to help continue to guide you. And I probably would have relaxed a little more. <sighs> yeah. Kinder. So, liber so liberating, man. Yeah, thanks. Um, the second question is mindset. So what is a mindset shift that you've shared, that, you, that, you can, that you've had, that you can share, that you think has contributed to you, you know, the success and the happiness and the fulfillment that you have right now? The mindset shift is that I can create anything that I put my mind on if I'm willing to work at it, learn how to do it, understand it, be patient enough and have faith. And I have one question that I ask myself whenever it comes to what I'm looking to create in the world, because when I can get to the answer of this without any interruption or any, um, any counter thought to this, I'm golden. And that thought is this. Why not me? Yeah. Like, why me? Well, why not? So why, why, not? why not me? I want to do this. Why not me? And then that sets me on the journey of belief, the energy, the intention to start putting the conditions together. But nice. I love it. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just processing it. That's why no, I know uh, it's, 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 it's a lot to process. All right, man. Uh, the, 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 the third question is map. So Clarity is something that a lot of people lack. They, you know, they don't know what they want, who they are, where they're going. So do you have, so do you have any piece of advice, tool, tactic, strategy to help people gain more clarity? Yeah. So the lack of clarity comes from a lack of knowing their own self because mm -hmm. they've been trying to be somebody for somebody else. They've been trying to be a version of themselves that is either loved by somebody else, accepted by somebody else, approved by somebody else. So they've been living out of that version. Once they realize that the most important person to gain acceptance from is themselves, and they go down that journey, they will liberate themselves to feel better about who they are, feel less of a need to be something to somebody else. Not that they're going to eliminate people they love in their life, but then their true soul's creative intention desires can rise to the surface and they can get that clarity. The reason they don't have clarity on what they, who they are, or what they want is because they haven't gotten in touch with themselves enough as it relates to sort of a bond with who they are. Because once they do that, then, oh my God, I never realized I wanted to paint before, but you know, now I, I, I do want to do that. I never let myself do that because I just, people laughed at me or I couldn't do it or whatever it is, or I wanted to be a, you know, uh, an entrepreneur, or I wanted to be whatever. There's a million different things out there, but it starts with that union that you come to with your own self, knowing that you're perfect right where you are. That's a great insight, man. 
So being okay with like not being liked because that's not what you're here for. You're not here to like be liked by everyone, right? You're here right. to I just mean, express the most uh, like pure and authentic version of yourself. And then who yeah. likes you will like you. Right. It's natural when you're young because we, we, we feel connect when we feel connected, we feel safe, right? So either friends, we feel safe, but we're part of a pack. We're part of people, our parents, we want to make sure that they approve of us because we might not, they might not love us. And then we'll be, you know, left to our own devices and we won't be able to survive. So a lot mm. of this gets embedded very young on this. I have to do this to please them thing. But as you get older, you start to realize the most important person to feel good about is yourself. And once you give yourself permission there, then you're, your true desires can come to the surface and you can feel the freedom to go after them. And that's yeah. when life gets really fun. And uh, it just sparked a new insight. So, and, and that's why unconditional love is so important, right? Like if your parents showed you unconditional love when you were young, yes. you wouldn't have the need to be a version of yourself that was liked or loved Bingo. by someone. Bingo. And that's what we were talking about nurturing kids before we just let them be because we showed them unconditional love. As long as they were, you know, I mean, there are some things to help them survive in society that they have to manners and, and graces and certain things that, you know, help grease the wheel to become successful in the world. But, um, but yeah, that's why we talked about that. That's why it's, it's really important. And if you didn't experience unconditional love, that you go through the process of self-awareness that brings you to that place and you keep digging in. You keep finding the truth about yourself because you will be I hope, liberated. Man, I hope like this is so exciting. I hope um well everyone is able to like you know absorb this insight. But okay, mindset map motion. What is a habit that you have right now, Howard, that you think is contributing to your success? Habit. So what's interesting is, is my habits have been formed by the transformation internally. So they, I don't even have to think of them anymore because they're just natural to who I am. But nice. the, the, the habits that I have that for me, that help me in the world is going out into the world and trying to see into the eyes of every human being as a child that are, they're trying to find their way. And it takes away judgment and allows me to approach them with an energy that creates more of the experience that I'm looking for with them rather than them feeling any sort of judgment or uh, from my part, which makes them defensive. I go in with a sense of just love and appreciation. Hey, how can I serve? And that that's helped me in life. Nice. So is that you something you can develop? Yeah, of course. Right. You, you can develop that habit that you have, like looking into someone's child, child's eyes. You no, know, looking into their eyes and seeing, seeing the child that's trying to find peace and happiness in the world. because every, okay. everybody is. Mm -hmm. to a certain degree. And it just takes away the, uh, the any of the negativity. Um, but yeah, the way you develop it is by finding it within your own self. Oh, nice. So once you take the judgment away from yourself, you don't, you don't judge people in the world anymore because you know everybody's going through the same journey you are and trying to find their way through Damn. life. Yeah. And again, humility, compassion. With yourself. Yeah, yeah first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The last question is, Measure. So um, what do you think about measuring and tracking? Measuring and tracking growth development? Just uh, mindset, map, motion, measure, money. You know, most people want money. So like, that's, what, that's why I ask these questions. Measuring like KPIs, tracking and stuff like that. So do I don't think about get it? into a lot of that minutia, but I do think it's important to, uh, to measure, to define who you, what, I have a, in, in my um, workshops, I'll have a, really powerful exercise at the end where people write down what it is their intention is. What do they want more than anything else? And then they write down um, sort of a, a creed of who they want to be in order to create that. So those are like five I am statements okay. that they aspire to become. I am more patient. I am more loving. I am more on time. I am more um, effective every day with my, whatever it is that they're trying to do. And then they write down five action statements that validate each I am statement. So it's a measure to see if you're BSing yourself about what you want. You said, this is what you want. You said, this is who you want to become. Let's see if the actions every day are measuring up or not. And it's just a very simple way to, to remove the BS out of the equation. You're just not ready. If you're not acting in a way that is, that is fulfilling you at the end of the day, then you just haven't been ready to step into that version. You don't believe it fully, or there's still too many doubts that are holding you back. 
But if you believe it, you'll make those hard phone calls that you perceived were hard. You'll, you'll do the work. You'll shut the phone off for five hours in order to do the writing that you need to do. You know, you'll get those things done, but the world and its energy of its, of, you know, there's a lot of negativity in the world. It's almost like a psychic wall sometimes that, you know, you feel like a weight, you go to move and you're like, man, it's like a weight on me. I want to go do that. That's what I know I should do. Why am I feeling like I can't get up and do it? And it really takes building a strong will, a strong desire and a strong belief in yourself to get you in those habits that you do it. But that's what I would, that's the only thing I would measure is, are you being every day? Can you lay your head on the pillow at night and go, you know what? I had a really good day today. I was a really good person, got some things done. I rested for a little bit, watched some basketball, but that's cool. You can't be all, you know, yeah. all, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Right. So, you know, I had some fun, but I got, I had a good healthy day and a great mindset. And if you can do that every day, like you said earlier, you know, raising your frequency every day, it leads to really good things. Your, your field of will be really rich in, uh, uh, in the fruit it produces. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, so Howard, I've, I've enjoyed this a lot, man. And if other people have enjoyed this and they've had some insights that made, uh, made uh, fundamental shifts in them and they want more, they want to get your book, Time in a Bottle, Mastering the Experience of Life, or they want to get I Am, The Power of Discovering Who You Really Are, or they just want to get in touch with you and, and, and get to learn more about you, maybe your content, your videos or whatever. Where can they... What, what is like, where can they go? Where can they go? And okay. find you? So there's several sources. Um, HowardFalco.com, H O W A R D F A L C O.com is my website. Total Mind Sports is my sports website. So you can see what I've done with athletes. Um, the books are available. Um, both of these books are available on Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble, and they should be in every independent bookstore. Um, and then Instagram, uh, TikTok, Facebook. Um, LinkedIn. So I'm on all the social channels as well. They can connect with me and reach me there if they want to stay close and connected to the work. And then I do private session work for people that want to get into some private coaching. Um, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we'll put everything there. I've had a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Howard. And uh, yeah, my man. honor. Thank Thanks. you for who you are, Alex. I appreciate what you do every day and the journey you're on. It's fantastic. I can't imagine how many lives you're going to help. So thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching the Gentleman Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment Talk podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with one friend, leave us a comment, and let us know. 99% of people never leave a review or comment, but we love and are very thankful with the 1% of you who do. If there's something or someone you want to see on this podcast, send me a message on Instagram at Alex underscore Ramirez 1020 and let me know. I say thank you for that. I have an amazing surprise for each and every one of you who does take the time to leave us a comment or review on YouTube or one of the major podcasting platforms 